Are you a keyboard enthusiast who often asks himself, how come my keyboard doesn't have a 13 inch touchscreen? Then this might be the video for you. For everyone else who doesn't like dog content, let's get it. What's good with it? Today we're taking a look at the Max Free K3, a mechanical keyboard with a lot of tricks up its sleeve. Now, before we go any further, I do want to say that Max Free sent over the K3 for my honest opinion and review, but they won't be getting the chance to view this video before I upload it or have any input on what I say. You always know I keep that real. And I'm hoping you could trust me more than them seemingly AI generated five star reviews on their website, but I ain't gonna say nothing about that. Now, taking a look at the device, it's actually quite large compared to your standard keyboard of course in this full flat position it's closer to the size of my 15 inch gaming laptop closed it has 82 keys with the built-in knob and is more like a 75% layout style as it has dedicated arrow keys it comes with PBT keycaps in a solid colorway not amazing but not totally boring and it ships with Gateron yellow switches if you want to tune your typing experience it's also hot swappable so you can adjust it to your heart's content but for now let's see what it sounds like at stock Now I'm going to purposefully ignore the 13 inch elephant in the room. Hey yo! And let's take a look at the IO on the back. It's pretty robust providing you with the full size SD card reader, two USB-C ports for connectivity and power delivery, and two USB 3.0 ports for additional peripherals. And if that's not enough, you have an additional full size M.2 slot for giving your system a bit more storage. I do have to say that I appreciate them making the extra space needed for the built-in screen multifunctional. On the sides, you do have speakers, which are great to use in a pinch, but I feel about these the same way I do any monitor or laptop audio solution. Just get some headphones or desktop speakers. All right, let's get into it. The built-in 13 inch 10 point IPS touchscreen. Being that it's so wide, it comes in at a weird resolution of 1920 by 720 with the 1000 to one contrast ratio and 60% of the NTSC color gamut covered. The screen angle is adjustable using the side buttons, but please don't try to be like me and strong arm it. I'm glad they also provide you this pleathery cushion cover for when it's not in use or possibly for travel to keep the screen from getting damaged. If you had this on your desk at work and didn't want your boss to know you were watching Martin reruns, you could quickly throw it on and boom. But stop playing, Tommy. We know you ain't got no job, man. But back to the screen, let's talk about getting this thing connected. There are a couple different ways you can go about this. The first one is with a single USB-C cable, and they provide this nice one with a right side angle to help. This option is more suited for laptops or newer gaming PCs with a proper built-in USB-C port. For most desktops, you're gonna to wanna to use this included cable that has an HDMI connector breaking out to two USB-A ports and one USB-C. Now, if you don't pay attention to the manual, Pay attention to me right here. You're going to want to plug the black USB port into one of your motherboard ports. Then you're going to want to plug the red USB port into either the included 30 watt adapter or something equivalent and better. At first I tried plugging them both into the regular USB ports on my motherboard, but then it would just power cycle or stop working mid type. You have to make sure you plug the red power USB into something with enough output to fully power the system while the standard USB port handles the keyboard's connection to the PC. Also, if the touchscreen isn't working out of the box when you connect to your Windows PC, you have to go into tablet settings and enable it. Now, when it comes to watching content on the screen, I have to say that I appreciate having the extra option on my desk, especially since I'm used to having a dual screen setup. Now, I won't lie, I still would prefer a standard 16 by nine option like that 4K portable monitor I recently reviewed, even though it's on the pricier side, you could just substitute one of the cheaper 1080p portable monitors for the same effect. But back to the K3. I honestly wouldn't use this as my primary panel for watching movies or gaming. 
even though it's technically possible. I think one of the best options is to have a music streaming app like Spotify or Tidal going while you're doing work and using the touchscreen to control the vibes. This is also not gonna be your color accurate monitor for productivity like video editing or Lightroom. Overall, just for the benefit of having another monitor on your desk, I'm not mad at it as long as you understand its limitations. It's bright enough for standard YouTube content, and even though the majority of what you watch will have massive black boxes on the side, if you need another monitor to watch my videos on while you dominate the gulag in your main panel, then it's a setup worth looking into. So overall, can I recommend the Max Free K3? Well, honestly, that depends on you. Individually, I would say that all of the parts are kind of mid. There are much better options for a mechanical keyboard or a portable monitor to add to your desktop. But when it comes to getting this in an all-in-one device with added support for USB peripherals and a full-size M.2 slot to expand your storage, then you have to put that into consideration. Hi, right, folks, I'm gonna get up out of here. I leave links to the K3 down below in the description. Make sure you leave a comment, especially to leave those emojis for the Van Gloria Tihova. Rest in peace. Always love you. I'm gonna get up out of here. It's your Kenfo Dookie. Holla at your boy.